Hello, everybody. Today I would like to present our work that we did together with Costas Dallas. Uh, this research was developed within the ARCWORK Workgroup work 3. We wanted to understand how the practice of communicating archaeological data to the public is carried out on Facebook, uh, the most widespread uh, social networking site these days. For this, we decided to collect evidence from archaeology-related Facebook administrators across Europe. From 32 invitations that we sent, 11 administrators agreed to give us an individual scoping interviews, and five attended the online focus group. Our research draws from a systematic literature review of English language publications on archaeology and social network sites that we did a while ago. This helped us to shape the questions for in scoping interviews, we mostly wanted to find out what motivates people to create archaeology-related Facebook sites, what they consider important, valuable, rewarding, and challenging in their work. Uh, while we explored a variety of questions concerning content curation and user participation norms, as well as administrators' consideration about the purpose of the Facebook site, their work, and role. We used MaxQDA uh, to conduct qualitative data analysis of a full transcript of scoping interviews and the focus group discussion. Our analysis was shaped by a code system uh, that we developed in collaboration with other artwork work group three researchers. The code system drew from activity theory and practical argumentation models, and it was extended with open coding. Among other things, we sought to identify key metaphors admins used to describe their work and the Facebook sites they were involved with, drawing from Lakoff's and Johnson's conceptual metaphor theory. This is what I will focus today in this presentation, aiming to map particular word expressions in the transcripts with the underlying meanings they manifest. In our focus group uh, conversation, we introduced some predefined metaphors defining the role of Facebook admin uh, as a broadcaster, as a connector, as a curator, as an educator, as an influencer, and as an observer. In the conversation that followed, to start with, everyone agreed that it's hard to single out one particular role, as usually admins engage with different activities. Nevertheless, they did point either directly or implicitly to some roles, which from their individual experience on Facebook sites stand out more prominently. For example, Federico noted that he usually reposts, shares news and content from various uh, different sources. From this, we extrapolated that he adopts the metaphor of admin as a broadcast and connector. Uh, Zeta, on the other hand, identified herself as a curator and as educator. Similar, Vetdi referred to herself explicitly as an influencer even she said she doesn't like uh, the title. She confirmed that it's important for her to set an example or be the first to publish interesting content, providing substance for the influencer metaphor. But as this discussion continued, additional roles and descriptions of activities appeared, providing evidence for additional metaphors, which were not in the initial list we shared with the participants. These unprompted metaphors were the admin as an advisor, as an artist and as a choreographer. To see how we worked, here is Irini on her work with the Ottoman Monuments of Greece Facebook group saying, it's very demanding work. You have to contribute to encourage people, members contributing to solve problems, conflicts, and to act as a bridge. It's like a ballet, some kind of ballet. And this statement is evidence of the admin as choreographer metaphor. Connected with the key metaphors, our participants also identified qualities they consider traits of a good admin listed in this slide. Most are uncontroversial, but one important trait became the subject of, of debate. Should an admin be an expert or specialist in archaeology or not? Let's see the arguments as they unfolded. Thing uh, to have is to be knowledgeable, like to be an expert on what they're writing. Um, there is a general tendency that uh, people who are not experts are trying to, uh, are kind of, um, kind of assigned 
to uh, update Facebook pages on uh, expert field on, on, on fields that uh, require expert require expertise and uh, what you have at the end it's not very very nice the ideal uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook admin for archaeology staff uh, or for heritage staff should be an archaeologist or a heritage specialist or an art specialist and here is Irina with a different opinion generalist, I'm not an archaeologist, so the, the main characteristic for me uh, should be to encourage people to engage and uh, to contribute information and uh, change ideas, uh, because, uh, you know, a Facebook group is not, um, you know, it's, it's not an academic forum, it, you don't need to, uh, to be a specialist. I mean, maybe, maybe it's not good to be a specialist. The main purpose should, uh, should become to, uh, to make, you know, uh, special things uh, interesting for, for wider audiences. As conversation evolved, there was a lot of accommodation between the two participants, which is understanding, uh, which is interesting in its own right. But what is important for our argument here is that different uh, norms between Irina and Zeta that persisted across other parts of the discussion. Well, I'm a generalist, I'm not an a really, really important so thing uh, to have um, is to be knowledgeable. We also wanted to gain insights about how Facebook is conceived as a platform, how it operates and what value it brings to archaeology. In this slide, we presented participants with metaphors derived from the literature and from scoping interviews. Is the Facebook site is a communication channel? Is it a bridge, a forum, a news service, a, a hub, or maybe an archive? As admins responded to the prompts, their responses lend support to the idea that multiple, multiple metaphors govern at the same time, some agreeing explicitly that it's all of these. However, specific metaphors were supported by particular things that individuals said, as is clear from the experts presented in this slide. But the discussion also evoked additional unprompted site metaphors. The Facebook site as a lab a place where things that involve science could be combined and improved, created and done differently. The site could be also a sidekick, aiding to something that is already has been established. The site as a battlefield are underlying the more general phenomena of how social media platforms operate as fields of contestation, connected with the questions of weaponization and information, echo chambers and symbolic conflict online. The site also could be a movement, a metaphor implied in Irina's talk about her Facebook group and one privileging and understanding of participation not as creativity, but as activism and civ civic empowerment. One of the most interesting conversations that developed within the focus group was a discussion about the differences of, of how Facebook pages and groups operate. Listen to an expert of these debates. To, to create a group uh, because I wanted many people to get engaged uh, on this subject uh, and uh, because uh, one of the purposes of this initiative was to sensitize uh, many people on, uh, on, on those monuments. Was that we wanted like loads of engaged audience. We wanted the audience to have a say, we wanted the audience to uh, like contribute to like to just um, kind of receive the pulse of what people think about archaeology and how do they um, understand archaeology. I'm not the, the most active contributor <laughs> in my group. Uh, there are many people posting very interesting things. Uh, I'm more personal. Uh, I don't post many, many things, but uh, I kind of encourage people to post. And then I might, um, I might contribute to the conversation that, uh, that follows. Uh, or more casual kind of the environment of the of the group is more casual. The environment of the page is kind of more formal. In uh, 
in a group, you, you, you are open to many risks, I mean, uh, to different opinions, to, to the exchange of ideas. Uh, part of our group uh, is activism, uh, because we also work uh, for the preser preservation of the monuments, not only to show them. Uh, um, the page is more um, suitable to, um, to profits and uh, a group to non-profits, perhaps. Profit, everything is not profit with us. Um, so it is Facebook page, but it's not, not nothing. It, it does nothing with profit. So I wanted uh, Facebook to be open to everybody, not to to be. You, so you, you you could have just click on like and that's it. You don't ha you didn't have to join or something like that. So it can be visible to anyone. Business wise, uh, for social media as well. Uh, we decided to change our policy and introduce a page so that uh, our uh, contribution to the social media to, to, would be measurable. Like the page is, I think the policy is such that uh, the audience doesn't post things on your page. Yes. So, so the page is to like probably to promote another kind of media. So like um, um, a profile, it's like um, a... a, a uh, an, an identity, it's like a logo. It's and uh, I chose the, to, to create a page because uh, at the time I was uh, starting my blog. So basically it was to spread the information, of, uh, the news from the blog. I think a, a Facebook page is like uh, more like a one-way communication. Uh, the creator, the man behind it, and uh, he is like uh, standing in between the information and the society and the groups are different kind of uh, nature because uh, when you create a group it's living its own life and you are just part of it to, to create a group uh, because this de this debate gave rise to two uh, polar metaphors uh, participants offered to characterize, char characterize pages versus groups. Firstly, Facebook page is an edifice. Uh, the page and its community of followers is understood as something to be built, to be constructed, so that is big and strong. Secondly, Facebook group as an organism, an organic system consisting of evolving independent parts, its members, as well as contents that live together, together as an ecosystem. In this presentation, we focused on one aspect of our qualitative data analysis of interviews and a focus group discussion with archaeology-related Facebook administrators, conceptual metaphors, underlying the verbal accounts of what a Facebook site is and what admin is. Our research, the conceptual scheme we used, and analysis we performed includes additional dimensions, the background and motivation of admins, the history, perceived value and rewards, they enjoy from their Facebook work, also the norms they share on members and followers, on archaeology-related Facebook content, and on challenges and issues they face, among other things. In this broader context, what I presented today offers some interesting insights on how cognition interacts with action in the minds and work of archaeology-related Facebook admins. Conceptions of Facebook group versus Facebook pages reveal divergent functions governing social media for formativity, drawing from Erwin Goffman's frame analysis as applied by Jenny Kidd in her careful analysis of social media and museum communication. Groups seem to perform the work of the inclusivity frame, while pages to perform the function of the marketing frame. Contradicting views expressed in the focus group conversation manifest this conflict on what Facebook should be for in archaeology. Some conceptual metaphors reveal a particular kind of analogical correspondences on a Facebook site with heritage institutions, a phenomenon that enacts the DiMaggio and Powell's notion of institutional isomorphism. But other metaphors seem to derive from other domains outside the institutional realm. Facebook site as a movement, as a battlefield, as ballet, and as organism underlie this broader dimension. Finally, accrual of social capital, both bridging and bonding, seems to be a central factor underlying multiple, multiple metaphors of admin 
a broadcaster, as a curator, as an educator, as an influencer, as an advisor. We are continuing our wor work towards a peer-reviewed paper presenting the results of our broader study, including the analysis I shared with you today. We would be grateful for your questions and feedback on our work. Thanks for your attention.